Hello, today I wanted to do a short video on the fuel flow on an E300. Um, what you're going to find is that this hose right here comes up into this device right here. This is called the uh, thermostat for the, uh, or the heater thermostat for the fuel. It leaves there and it comes up, it comes up into this area right here. Now this is actually a separate chamber that runs all the way along the side. This is your pre-filter. And what happens is it comes in here and it's a, it's a um, it's kind of a mesh looking filter. And from there, it comes out and it comes out right down here. And then from there, it comes out and goes over here. And this black box that it's attached to, I'm sorry to tell it's a black box, but trust me it is. This is called your fuel shutoff valve. And this actually is a, this as well as this top section up here is like a terminus for a lot of this, um, or a terminal. Uh, so it comes down, it comes into here. And then from there, what happens is like, I guess if your engine's off, it doesn't go any further than there because it's shut off. But it, once it's open, it actually comes down and comes out of the bottom of that black box which is right, I can't really get a view of it here, but it's right in back of that plug. So it comes down around, and then it goes into this device right here, which is a pump. Okay, so this, so it's coming into here. Now, it still hasn't gone through the main filter yet, and it's still not pressure high pressurized. It comes out of here, and it actually comes out of the top section of this pump. And from there, it comes up. Comes up, 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 up. Comes up and comes to here. Now it's in the main filter area. So it's filling up the main filter. Uh, once the, it gets filtered in the main filter, it comes out. And it comes back down to that black box again, which is right here, which is your shutoff valve. There we go. So, it, so it comes to the shutoff valve again, and then from the shutoff valve, there's really no way to show you this, but inside here there's a transfer point where it comes out and it goes over to the injection pump, which is right here. So it's basically filling up, coming out of here, coming down to the shutoff valve again, and then traveling over into the injection pump. Okay, now from the injection pump, of course, we know what happens then. It goes in, travels up all the little lines and goes to all your injectors. The surplus comes out right here, travels up this tube, goes into this junction right here, as well as the overflow from the injectors comes down and also comes to this terminal. And then they both feed into this tube right here, which goes back to your uh, goes back to your tank. Now a few words um, of caution if you're going to be uh, doing any work here. Um, people say you don't have to take the manifold off. Um, I say take the manifold off because I went to replace this injector line back here and I spent months working on it trying to secure it. It kept leaking, 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 leaking and little did I realize that it had nothing to do with that. That was just, I mean, it was leaking, it was broken. But what happened was that the injector pump was leaking. And the only way you would ever see that is if you took off the uh, manifold. So I would have saved myself a lot of aggravation if I would have just taken the manifold off from the very beginning. And a couple other uh, small notes here. These clips right here are essential. You see, there's right there, right there right there, right, and one right there, as well as these here. The reason, and these are homemade versions and so I can get the proper clips. The reason these are essential is because it keeps the hard lines from shaking around like crazy and eventually cracking, and they will crack because that's what happened back here. This line here actually fatigued, cracked, and it was shooting a three-foot stream of diesel fuel up. So, the, so the, the leak areas that are possible are, from what I've read on the forums and I know from experience on this, is right here. This is your, what they call it, your livery valves can leak. And also an easy check 
is right here. If you have a leak and you have just changed your pre-filter, there's actually an O-ring underneath here. Make sure you change that O-ring. So out uh, another area of that can leak and probably will eventually on all the on all these is uh, this uh, connector right here. Actually, all these connectors are all the same. They all take the same size O-ring, and they all work pretty much the same. Um, how these work is when you push this clip in, you can then, and I'm, I'm not going to do it right now because it takes a fair amount of wiggling and jiggling uh, to do it, but you, you actually push that clip in, wiggle and jiggle this, and eventually it will pull out. It is 100% a friction fit. Um, this little piece right here actually acts as a, a guard to keep it from popping out. Um, but there's, it's not screw or bayonet or anything else, it's just friction. And what happens is that the O-rings inside here eventually lose their shape. And so what you can do is you can replace all the O-rings or you can just order a whole new set which is basically what I did. The only thing that you have to be aware of is that on this bolt here, you need this crush washer here, but all these pieces actually are shipped with the O-rings on them. Okay, so I thought I would add that to the quest. So I'm, w I'm waiting for parts right now to come in so I get to make videos because the parts are, were shipped via US mail and it is to say a mess is an understatement. Okay, so I hope this helps somebody.